What's up guys? Welcome to another BitVault tutorial. And today I'm gonna to show you how to recover a Unchained Capital Vault wallet using a third party wallet like Electrum. But in today's case, we're gonna use Caravan's, uh, Caravan's own wallet. Keep in mind guys, it's the same thing, right? So you could recover using Caravan, you can recover using Electrum. You could even recover using Lily, right? It's the same thing. And I have Phil today, and he's gonna walk us through the steps. What's up, Phil? Hey, what's up, Nico? Thanks so much for having me. Thanks for coming on, man. Yeah, so uh, before we get started today, just a kind of a high level, what we've been working on at Unchained Capital is we're a, a Bitcoin native financial services platform. And what that means is that for all of our products and services, uh, we use collaborative multi-signature where keys are held by uh, our clients, they're also held by Unchained Capital. So our vault product is a wallet, it's a multi-signature vault, where as a client you get to hold two keys and we get to hold one key. Now one of the biggest questions that we receive is, well what happens if Unchained Capital just disappears or if I can't access my account for any reason? And part of what we believe being Bitcoin native is, is ensuring that we are not a single point of failure for our clients. So we've engineered ourselves out of the custody risk equation. So if you work with us, you're always holding your own keys, you have all the information you need to be able to recover your Bitcoin externally from Unchained, and that's what I'd like to show you guys today. Awesome, dude, I'm so excited. All right, guys, so what I'm gonna do right now is share my screen, and I'll walk you through the entire workflow of uh, recovering your vault Bitcoin using Caravan, which is our open source multi-signature tool that lives just right in the browser. Uh, so let me share my screen here. All right. Can you see this all right? Yes, sir. Excellent. So this is, uh, this is what logging into your Unchained Capital account looks like. You're just on our website. Uh, in the upper right-hand corner, you can sign in and sign up. And then uh, you know, use your username and password here, and then two-factor authentication. Of course, you're going to have that enabled, although I don't have it enabled for my demo account. And then when you log into your Unchained Capital account, you're brought to your dashboard here. Now, the major difference between an Unchained Capital account and uh, an account that you might have with a bank or an account that you might have with another you know, more traditional Bitcoin company is that your account itself doesn't protect the flows of Bitcoin. All of the Bitcoin are protected via two out of three multi-signature addresses, which means that it requires two hardware wallets uh, in order to move the Bitcoin out of the address. So with an Unchained Capital account, what your account is protecting is just kind of your information, right? With, if somebody logs into your account, what they can see is your balances, but they can't move any of your money without having two private keys. So for all of our products and services where clients hold at least one out of three keys, because remember, all of our Bitcoin addresses are two out of three multi-signature. We give clients enough information to be able to recover and spend their money without even logging into their account. Now, that information lives here on this menu under the external spending information button. So, Phil, when, when you say, it, like, you know, just to kind of clarify with everybody that you provide enough information for someone to recover uh, you know, using a, a third party or using Caravan, does that mean like people could recover with Electrum? Does that mean people could recover with Lily and other third party wallets? Is that what you mean? It is very likely that you would be able to recover with really any other multi-signature wallet as long as that multi-signature wallet is able to understand the emerging multi-signature standards. So it's hard to say that 100% you'll be able to recover with everything. For sure you will be able to recover with Caravan because we know that it follows the emerging multi-signature standards and we designed it in order to be able to easily recover from vaults. Um, many clients have also rebuilt their vaults using Electrum uh, because Electrum also follows multi-signature standards. Uh, for some of the other wallets, we, we, don't have, we don't know for sure, but it is very likely 
um, what you need in order to be able to recover from a proprietary multi-signature wallet like uh, like a Unchained Capital Vault is this external spending information. And we give it to clients as a downloadable file. So after you've built your vault, you basically just download this file. And what the file contains is information about your addresses. Um, so this information, what I like to think of it as is sort of the treasure map. With this information, you can find your Bitcoin addresses, but you can't spend the Bitcoin addresses without two out of three keys. So in this analogy, right, this is the map to the treasure. It requires two keys to unlock the treasure chest. Um, with only two keys in a multi-signature address, you don't know where the treasure chest is located. You always need to have, with multi-signature, a combination of uh, your, your kind of wallet information, so all of the XPUBs, as well as enough of the private keys. But luckily, you know, so that sounds a little complicated, but luckily we've just packaged it into this nice file that you can download here. Now, this file is important to protect. It's not quite as important as your private keys, which of course should never come in contact with an internet connected device. Um, this file, since it kind of just contains like address information, we feel like it is okay to store it on some sort of encrypted uh, device or hard drive or in an encrypted file in a password manager, just somewhere behind a password. So you don't want to be sharing this with everybody because then you're telling people, hey, I own these addresses, um, but it's okay to keep them on, on an internet connected device because it's not quite as critical as private keys. So someone can't spend from this wallet. They could just, worst case scenario, if they end up finding that file, what they could really do is just see your activity, but they can't spend from that wallet. Exactly. Uh, with this file, and what I'll do is I'll load it into Caravan to go through the process, but with the file, they can see your addresses and they can see your transaction history. So let me just show you exactly how this file can be used with Caravan. So Caravan, which lives at caravanmultisig.com, is our open source uh, multi-signature tool that just lives right in the browser. And we tried to make it uh, user-friendly enough where you don't need to install anything, you don't have to you know, uh, download anything. You basically just boot it up in the browser by going to caravanmultisig.com. You select import wallet configuration. You grab that file that you just downloaded. And Caravan immediately sees, okay, here are the three keys, here are the XPUBs, looks good. Um, you can connect Caravan to your own full node or if you use this public mode, it's just grabbing the information from blockstream.info. So I'll select public for today because I don't have my full node connected to this instance of Caravan, but hitting confirm here will load up my vault. So already it has found the balance, you know, 8,822 sats. And it shows you, you know, so here's, here's your current active address and you can see any addresses uh, that, that were or historical that had historically been spent in any future or upcoming addresses. So this vault in particular, it only has a single active address right now. Awesome. Thanks, Phil. Uh, yeah, of course. So now, now that we're in Caravan, you know, you can send Bitcoin to your, uh, to your vault address. You can spend from your vault address. So on the send tab here, uh, all you have to do is paste in another Bitcoin address. So let me just grab another vault address and then we can go through the, um, the whole workflow here. So I'll be sending from uh, BitVault Vault to my personal vault. So I'll just paste this address in here. Um, I'll want to adjust the fee rate. Of course, uh, since I'm only sending like 8,000 sats, I think 142 Satoshis per byte is probably going to be more than the amount that I'm sending. So just for the demo, we'll uh, turn this down to one sat per byte. Uh, I'm not going to broadcast the transaction because it would probably take a couple weeks to confirm at this point. 
Uh, hitting the max button will just grab the maximum amount that we can spend. We preview the transaction down here. So as you can see, uh, we are spending from our vault address. We're sending it to a new address. And we'll go through and actually sign it. So we'll select the first key, which is Holzman. And I'll plug in my Trezor here. I'm using two Trezors today, but you can use a Trezor or a Ledger. Signing the transaction is taking me away from Caravan, where I'm actually speaking directly to Trezor and Trezor Connect. Trezor understands that what I'm trying to do right now is sign a Bitcoin transaction. I'll enter my PIN, which is a really weak PIN from my demo Trezor. And then on my device, what I can actually see, and I'll hold it up to my video here, hopefully everyone else can see that, um, is details about the transaction. So my Trezor is saying, confirm sending 8,465 sats to 3NW, uh, RXTD, et cetera, et cetera, M-E-K, GK, and I will confirm this on my device. It's showing me the, the change and the fee, and there's one signature. Now I'll unplug my first device, plug in my second device, and go through and gather the second signature. Because remember, in order to spend from a two of three multi-signature address, you need uh, the address information, so the map, as well as two out of three keys in order to unlock and spend the treasure. So device two is also a treasure today. Entering my pin. And once again, on my device, I'm seeing details about the transaction. So I'll go ahead and review it really quickly and confirm this one. And now I have a fully signed transaction that I can broadcast. So Caravan will broadcast this for you. Um, since I'm in public mode, the way that this transaction will be broadcast is via blockstream.info. So you're giving blockstream.info this information and then they're uh, distributing it to the entire network. If I was in private mode, what I could do is have my personal node be the one that broadcasts the transaction. Um, additionally, you know what you could do is just copy this signed transaction and go to, I think, blockchain.info or some other block explorer can be used to broadcast this transaction because this is a fully signed transaction. Um, but I think since it is such a small amount today, I won't actually hit broadcast and instead I'll, I'll show you how you can just remove signatures and That's then awesome. you can start the process over. And so Caravan is, oh, go ahead. Yeah, and, and it's so, you know, compared to, uh, you know, because I initially wanted to do this video because someone requested how to build it on Electrum, but Caravan just makes this experience so much more seamless and so much more, it's just easier to do, right? So um, if, if that's okay with you, Phil, I'm going to show everybody how to build this exact same wallet on Electrum, and you're going to see how much more complicated it is than using Caravan, right? So, Yeah, and I think, I think Electrum is an amazing wallet, and it does everything. Um, one of the downsides of Electrum is that it does everything. So Caravan is very, very focused. It's very simple. All it does is coordinate multi-signature addresses um, via the browser. So yeah, no installation. As long as you have your, your treasures set up and ready to go, you're ready to use Caravan. It's really fun to play around with. It's, it's so, you know what I like about it is that it's like designed for ease of use, right? And Electrum has a ton of functionality, but the learning curve is high, right? So it, it's, it's really, it's, it's, I, I love what you guys, I love what you guys did there anyway. So I'm going to take you. exactly the, the information that, that Phil provided to us and let me share my screen. Awesome. Okay. So we're here on my desktop and this is the file that Phil was referring to earlier. And what's awesome about Caravan guys is that it, it, takes that file and it just converts it, right? So it automatically detects that this is the first uh, pub file. This is the second pub file, 
right? These are the two keys that Phil owns, right? And which is why there's a deviation path because like Phil said in his analogy, you need to know where that treasure is, right? So, and then this is the key that uh, Unchained holds in, in case of an emergency. So That's right. And the, the derivation path, so what you can see here in this little file is called the, the BIP32 path. That, um, that number there, what I like to think of is that that's the, the file location on your device for a specific XPUB. So single signature uh, wallets generally use a different derivation path than this. Uh, this is a custom path that I've used um, for, for my wallet. Um, M450184, the, the traditional multi-signature standard for the type of address that we've built is M4500. So I can actually go in and pick uh, a new number on that third, uh, in that third depth there. So I picked 184 for this one and it changes entirely the XPUB that is produced. So from a high level, what that means is from one master secret, one master private key, and given a pathway, you can produce uh, XPUBs, totally unique XPUBs that you can use to build addresses and multi-sigs and all that good stuff. Cool. And so, guys, so on Electrum, because it's not, it's not the Caravan wallet, you can't just recover things very quickly. With Electrum, you're going to need this... Uh, this, I say deviation, forgive me guys, <laughs> um, I'm from Miami. So uh, you're going to need this deviation path, right? So when, it, and you're going to click, right? Use a hardware wallet. And what Electrum is going to do is it's going to connect to your pub file, right? This right here, it's going to, it's going to take it from the hardware wallet. And then it's also going to ask you for this deviation path. And that's the step that you would take if you actually had the hardware wallet and you wanted to be able to send from this Electrum wallet, but we're not going to do that today. We're just going to create a watch only wallet. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy the first, um, we're going to copy the first pub file. We're going to paste it right here. We're going to click next. We're going to create the second one. So we're going to take the second key guys. It's very important that you do this in order. If you don't do this in order, it's going to give you a completely different wallet. Right, so we're gonna click next, and we're gonna click the third one, and we're gonna click copy, paste, next, and it's gonna ask you for a password. That's because this is just a watch only. That's not necessary, and it's going to load up the wallet. I'm using my own node, so it's not as quick as using somebody else's. It's gonna take a little bit, but um, guys, it's it's super fast. Um, you know, it, and this, what this enables you to do, right, is it enables you to basically recover the same wallet that you had from the vault and you can now spend it from Electrum, right? And it has all the addresses, right? And it has it here. And if you had, you know, if you recovered this wallet using a hardware wallet, you would have the ability to sign the transaction. And actually what's even, what's really cool is that you could build a transaction here, right? I'm just gonna send it to myself, right? Mm -hmm. So you could build a transaction here and you could broadcast it from Caravan, right? You could take that sign transaction and you could even use Caravan to broadcast it if I had the ability to sign this. So what you would do is you go send, uh, you know, send whatever, so it's, I think it's like 50 cents or something. It's like 20 cents, right? So yeah, the total amount was like a dollar or something. I can't even have it. I can't even do that because this is a watch only address. So I want to save that for another tutorial. Anyways, guys, I hope you learned how to recover your vault wallet using a third party wallet like Electrum and using the Caravan wallet, which as you guys could see, it's much faster. It's quicker. And for the privacy freaks out there, you can connect it to your own node. So it's all a preference. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much, Phil, for coming on. And guys, if you want the best security, check out the Multisig Unchained Vault Wallet. And if you guys cold storage like me, that's where you want to put your Bitcoin. I'll see you guys on the next one.